Hi, I'm Graeme Steele, CEO and founder of CryptoSense, and today I'm going to talk about quantum key distribution. Does anybody really need it? Well, what is quantum key distribution? Essentially, it is a way of using special purpose hardware and the physics of quantum mechanics to distribute cryptographic keys to a bunch of people in a system. And then these keys they're going to use in a normal classical cryptography way. They're just going to use the standard symmetric key algorithms for encrypting and decrypting data. So why would we want to go to the trouble of making special purpose hardware and using quantum mechanics to distribute keys? Well, there are two appealing properties uh, of these proposals. So the first is that because of the properties of these uh, quantum mechanics and these photons we're going to send around, we can tell whether somebody has been eavesdropping on the line when we sent out the key. So there's no way that uh, anybody can listen in uh, to the state of these uh, photons without also disturbing them in a way that we can detect. And so we protect ourselves in a sort of perfect way against eavesdroppers uh, in a way that we can't do with classical keys. The second property that's interesting is what you normally do to distribute keys for this kind of system is to use asymmetric cryptography. So you use public key cryptography to distribute your keys, and then the keys, once they've been established, uh, are then symmetric keys which encrypt and decrypt all the data. So this is how, for example, the TLS protocol works that you're probably using to watch uh, YouTube uh, right now. It uses asymmetric crypto to set up the keys, and then symmetric crypto to do the, the data processing. So all of these asymmetric cryptographic methods rely on some kind of mathematical property uh, they rely on some kind of hard problem, so a problem that is hard in one direction and easy in another. So easy when you have the key and hard when you haven't got the key. Uh, and the trouble with these is that over time, sometimes we discover new mathematics, which means that it becomes possible to uh, break these, these old problems. Uh, and in particular, with the advent of quantum computers, there are going to be algorithms around which can break all of the asymmetric cryptography that we're using today. So sometimes quantum key distribution is put forward as a solution to the problem of the uh, near future where we're going to have these large quantum computers that can break all of our current asymmetric crypto. Uh, but there are some downsides. So uh, in order to get this nice property of being sure that nobody has uh, interfered or looked at the, the signals going down these photons on the line, we need to have a point to point connection uh, between uh, all the nodes in the network where we're going to send these keys. We can't have routers or repeaters or anything else because then we lose those nice properties uh, that we had about the, being sure that nobody had listened to, to the key. Uh, and so that typically means that you end up with a uh, restricted range. So if you're going to send these photons down a fiber optic cable, typically quotes are given around the idea that maybe the maximum range is about 100 kilometers with fiber optic cable in really perfect uh, condition. That's one reason why when you see discussions of quantum key distribution, they often also involve satellites. So then the idea is that uh, we can send the photons through space and they're gonna bump into fewer things. There's not much stuff up there, uh, so we can increase the range. But of course, that means that you do need to get all those satellites up there and you need to be totally sure that those things are trusted, can't possibly be compromised and so on uh, in order for all that to work. Uh, the other downside of quantum key distribution is that we don't really know much about how to put it into practice in a secure way. So it took us a very, very long time to understand how to implement classical cryptography and classical computing hardware in a way that there were not things like side channel leaks uh, or leaks based on things like power consumption and so on. And so we need to learn all of that uh, for doing QKD and we don't really know how to assess uh, even those things now. Uh, so do we really need it? Well, the Expert panels recently produced some opinions about this. So the NSA, for example, uh, produced a white paper over the summer in 2021 where they essentially said uh, directly, anybody who has uh, national security information to protect should not be using quantum key distribution or even researching quantum key distribution without consulting the NSA uh, directly. Essentially for those reasons that we, what we talked about, though, those restrictions that there are in practice and the fact that we can't assess the security of real implementations. We don't have any framework for doing that. Uh, so that's the, the US. The UK uh, NCSC, so that's the National Cybercrime uh, Security Centre, uh, also published a white paper, this was back in 2020, where they said that they do not endorse the use of QKD for protecting uh, any kind of secret data and that if you're worried about a future large quantum computer that can break asymmetric cryptography, to look instead at their recommendations around post-quantum cryptography and how to get that into place in a hybrid way. And that's what they were recommending uh, for you to use. Uh, and the ANSI, so that's the French equivalent body, has also produced in English a technical paper on quantum key distribution. 
where they even go a little further to say that if you have this data protect, you shouldn't spend your dollars on QKD, uh, that you could in fact be spending on resolving the regular problems that come around in real systems around things like key management and protecting keys and, and all those sort of nitty gritty details of using cryptography that QKD doesn't address at all. It just leaves those to, as an orthogonal problem that we already have to, to try and fix now. So that's the expert's verdict on uh, QKD. Essentially, if you're worried about quantum computers, you should be looking at post-quantum cryptography and tools to do your crypto inventory and get ready for that rather than investing in QKD. Uh, but why not if you're a scientist or an inventor looking at QKD as some interesting defense in depth that might become uh, useful in the future, could still, be, could still be an interesting thing. But if you've got data to protect right now today, it's uh, not QKD that you they should be looking at. So do consider subscribing to the channel to see more views about future cryptography, applied cryptography, quantum cryptography, and so on. Otherwise, I'll just see you here on the channel again soon uh, for another video. Mm -hmm.